the Chinese have announced that they're going to go to the moon. In fact, they will probably beat the United States. Is this the next big thing? A few days ago, it was revealed by Michio Kaku, the Chinese National Space Administration, CNSA, and the China Atomic Energy Authority, CAEA, that scientists analyzing lunar rocks and soil brought back by China's Chang'e, five mission had made a startling discovery. You heard that correctly. Scientists are learning more about what led to the conditions required for life on Earth and why some things are not how we expect them to be thanks to China's investigation of the moon's far side. What may this mysterious discovery on the moon be? How exactly will this change what we know about the cosmos? Join us as we explore the fascinating revelations buried in the moon's core. According to physicist Michio Kaku, dinosaurs were powerless and lacked a space program 66 million years ago when an asteroid collided with the Earth. However, according to Kaku, People are currently preparing for the time when the sun will consume Earth in 5 billion years and eventually die in ice as it exhausts its fuel. At the same time, the cosmos will expand until temperatures hit absolute zero. If we survive into the millions of years, we'll have the power of the unified field theory, the power of string theory, and the power to manipulate gravity, space, and time," he stated. In countless billions of years, we might desire to build an interdimensional lifeboat so we can leave our universe and travel to a warmer neighboring universe or another parallel one. The U.S. refers to space as the Wild West while China claims that policing it makes war more common. Anyway, China made a minor but important step toward becoming a space power less than two years ago. Oceanus Procellarum, Latin for Ocean of Storms, is a gigantic lunar mare that appears as a massive dark area from Earth. The Asian giant dispatched a robotic spaceship there for the first time. It is the moon's youngest terrain, claims the China National Space Administration. The Chang'e 5 probe from China touched down close to Mount Rumker, a 43-mile-long mass that towers about a mile into the sky. It collected lunar samples and sent them to the orbital module above the moon using a robotic arm. They were then sent back to Earth from there. All of this happened in a single lunar day, which is roughly equal to 14 days on Earth. These samples were the first lunar samples taken since the Soviet mission, Lunik 24 in 1976, and their study has now produced some unexpected findings. Where does lunar water originate is one of the biggest lunar riddles. A planet the size of Mars is thought to have collided with Earth more than 4 billion years ago, creating the Moon. The collision caused a portion of the Earth to break off and molten rock covered it. It was believed that the temperatures were so high that all the water evaporated forever. The moon still has water in it, and not just a few drops here and there, there are lots of it in the form of ice, as multiple robotic missions and terrestrial telescopes have demonstrated in recent years. A large portion of this water is found at the poles, where it is always in the dark. The first crewed expedition to the moon in 50 years will land precisely in these uncharted areas, according to NASA. The reason the expedition is landing there is because the region has water, which might provide nutrition for the personnel that might someday travel to Mars as well as the raw materials for rocket fuel. The origin of the frozen water was unknown until this point. Researchers speculate that the ice may have arrived through an asteroid or a previously undiscovered water resource because other space missions have also discovered ice in the sunlit regions of the Moon. Researchers from the Chinese Academy of Sciences KS, and two from Europe contend that materials sent by Chang'e 5 have the key to understanding the origin of lunar water. These samples, which were taken from the northwest of the moon, contain impact glass beads, which are tiny grains of glass of various colors that most likely formed at high temperatures following a meteorite collision with the moon. These glass beads that the Chang'e 5 collected, according to Michio Kaku, contain trace amounts of water. According to Sen Hu from the Planetary Physics Laboratory at CAS, there are 2,000 parts per million of water in the crystals, or 2,000 kilos for every ton of soil. Meteorite impacts on the moon are very common and happen all over the moon, meaning glass beads are distributed throughout its geography, from the equator to the polar regions. According to Michio Kaku, although so-called hydroxyl, one hydrogen and one oxygen atom, is probably more prevalent, the lunar water may be in its molecular state, 
two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. 270 billion tons of water are thought to be preserved on the moon as impact glass particles, according to researchers. In comparison to previous projections, this reservoir is enormous. For instance, a NASA radar on board the Indian probe Chandrayaan-1 in 2010 calculated that the North Pool of the Moon's craters held around 600 million tons of ice. The samples taken by the Chinese spacecraft are about a billion years younger than those collected by astronauts in the U.S. Apollo program and the Soviet Union's robotic missions. According to the most recent research, these glass beads have been forming for the past two billion years, and more have been formed during times of violent meteorite collisions, like the one that killed off the dinosaurs 68 million years ago when a sizable meteorite struck Earth. Sen Hu finds it intriguing that the water trapped in the lunar crystals was produced by the sun. Positively charged hydrogen atoms from a solar wind are thought to have entered the glass beads and mixed with the oxygen inside of them, according to an examination of the various sorts of hydrogen atoms present in the samples. These glass beads may also release some of their hydrogen charges when the temperature is high enough from sun radiation. He said these glass beads are in charge of the water cycle on the moon. This might be a different source of water. The best approach to extract it would be to gather lunar soil, heat it to 100 degrees Celsius in an oven, and then collect the steam that results. While it may sound absurd, Europe is sending its prospect spacecraft to the moon to do precisely that. For the purpose of analyzing the volatile substances present, including water vapor, a probe will drill into the lunar soil, gather samples, and heat them to 100 degrees. Whether there is water locked in the minerals on the moon can be determined by this mission, which the European Space Agency, ESA, will launch in 2026, according to James Carpenter, head of planetary sciences at ESA. Despite the fact that there is a very small amount of this material, a lot of lunar soil would need to be processed if it were to be useful for manned missions in the future, according to Carpenter. The water cycle of the moon, including the potential source of the frozen reserves at the poles, is clearly demonstrated by this research. The sparse atmosphere of the moon prevents interactions between the molecules floating there. Because of this, Carpenter explained, when the sun hits the glass beads, water vapor is released and shot out like a cannonball. He went on to say that water tends to stay longer in the coldest and darkest places, which is why it has collected in the form of ice at both poles of the moon. These impact beads, which are spread out all over, are the result of melting material cooling after being expelled by incoming space pebbles. The beads might be heated, perhaps by upcoming robotic missions, to extract water. To evaluate whether this is practicable, and if so, whether the water is safe to drink, more research is required. This demonstrates that water can replenish itself on the moon's surface. Michio Kaku asserts that there is a brand new water reservoir on the moon. Based on samples brought back by the Apollo moonwalkers more than 50 years ago, previous investigations discovered water and glass beads created by lunar volcanic activity. These two may be able to supply water for future crews as well as rocket fuel. By the end of 2025, NASA hopes to return astronauts to the lunar surface. They'll aim for the South Pole, where it's thought that craters there are full of frozen water and are always under darkness. Meanwhile, researchers are encouraged by the discovery of a unique lunar crystal on the Moon's near side, which could one day power the entire planet indefinitely. The lunar crystal is composed of a substance that was previously unknown to science and has a crucial component for nuclear fusion, a method of producing energy that uses the same forces that power the Sun and other stars in the galaxy. The crystal, which was discovered in lunar basalt particles recovered from the Moon in 2020, makes China the third country, after the US and the former Soviet Union, to find a new lunar mineral. The first lunar sample return mission since the 1970s was the Chinese Moon Mission, which touched down in Oceanus Procellarum in December 2020. More than 1.7 kilograms of lunar samples were collected and delivered safely to Earth. The phosphate mineral change site, Y, was given this name by the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology in honor of Chang'e, the lunar goddess in Chinese mythology. The translucent crystal is about the width of a human hair. Around 1.2 billion years ago, it developed in an area of the moon that experienced volcanic activity, helium-3, 
one of the main components of this crystal, may serve as a reliable fuel source for nuclear fusion reactors, according to scientists. On Earth, the element is exceedingly rare, but it appears to be fairly common on the Moon. The Chang'e 6 mission, which is anticipated to launch in 2024, will seek to gather the first samples from the Moon's far side, which is never visible to Earth. Even while it is yet too early for experts to predict the cost of such a fuel source, it will surely be quite expensive. Of course, there is the issue of returning lunar crystals, particularly the huge quantities required to power fusion reactors. Helium-3 has long piqued the interest of scientists as a potential source of nuclear fusion fuel. Natural nuclear fusion reactions take place when two light atoms combine into one heavier atom under conditions of intense heat and pressure. They take place inside stars, but as of yet, no powerful enough fusion reactor has been built by humans to ignite the process. According to the European Space Agency, Helium-3 is especially promising because it generates substantially less radiation and radioactive waste than other elements. The current nuclear fission process, utilized in nuclear power plants, produces radioactivity in addition to electricity, necessitating the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel into uranium, plutonium, and other waste. Since the process has caused significant safety issues, researchers have been working to find a technique to produce nuclear energy through nuclear fusion rather than fission. Since no radioactive waste is created during the fusion process, it might be a safer and more effective fuel source. The U.S. could be powered for a year with about 25 tons of helium-3, which is the same as a fully loaded cargo bay of a space shuttle. This implies that helium-3 has an estimated potential economic value of $3 billion per ton. This most recent discovery might launch a competition between numerous commercial enterprises and nations with space agencies that have indicated their ambitions to mine the moon for helium-3. On the other hand, researchers have uncovered a fascinating discovery on the moon that may offer important new information about how and when it was formed. Scientists have discovered granite traces beneath the compton belkovich volcanic complex, indicating that the region saw volcanic activity billions of years ago. This discovery has also led to speculation regarding the possibility of water during the period. This granite patch was found thanks to information gathered by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, a team of scientists, led by Matthew Siegler of the Planetary Sciences Institute, unexpectedly discovered a 31-mile stretch of cooled magma. They also discovered proof that radioactive heat was being produced beneath the compton belkovich region, as was stated on EMU. According to Siegler, analogous formations on Earth are connected to feeding groups of volcanoes, such as those in the Cascade Range in the Pacific Northwest. Siegler made this comparison between the massive granite body discovered on the Moon and those observed on Earth. However, it is uncommon to discover granite on the Moon because water and tectonic plate melting on Earth are required for the production of this rock. This raises an intriguing theory. If granite is there, water may have been present throughout the time when volcanic activity took place. To understand how the lunar crust developed during this early period of the Moon's history, Astronomers intend to continue their studies in this area. Let's examine what is known about the compton belkovich site specifically in order to gain a better understanding of this discovery. It is regarded as a highly radioactive lunar location by NASA and is thought to have formed as a result of volcanic activity. Thorium, which is regarded as a fertile element on the Moon, is rich in this region and was found in 1998 using a gamma-ray spectrometer this intriguing discovery creates fresh opportunities for comprehending our nearest cosmic neighbor. Scientists aim to learn important things about the Moon's past and shed light on its development by examining these old volcanic complexes and the geological features that are connected with them. Granite's presence and the possible presence of water during volcanic activity offer intriguing hints about the Moon's early history. As always, more investigation is required to verify these results and glean additional information. However, this finding advances our knowledge of the geological history of the Moon significantly. It serves as a reminder that there is still plenty to discover about our intriguing cosmic friend. This discovery has important ramifications for lunar science and opens a new, fascinating chapter in our continuous space exploration. Researchers hope to learn more about the origin and early history of the Moon by examining these old geological formations. This finding emphasizes the value of ongoing investigation and study to solve the riddles surrounding our planetary neighbors.
Prior to that, only 16 years after sending its first person into space, China achieved a world first by safely landing a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. The autonomous spacecraft, known as Chang'e 4, is carrying a 300-pound rover that is intended to gather data from the lunar surface, particularly from the von Karman crater, the oldest and deepest on the moon, using cameras, ground-penetrating radar, and spectrometers. This impact crater is located in the South Pole Aitken Basin, a one 600-mile-wide impact crater that was most likely created when a large asteroid struck the moon and part of its upper mantle material was forced to the surface. Why are we unable to see the moon's far side? The explanation lies not in the fact that the moon does not rotate. On the contrary, it does so at a rate that is consistent with its orbital period around the Earth. In other words, the moon orbits our planet once in around 27 days, and it also completes one complete rotation of its axis during that time. As a result, the moon only ever has one side towards Earth. The far side of the moon receives plenty of sunlight, thus labeling it the dark side of the moon isn't correct. It's interesting to note that the Earth and the moon weren't always in time. However, over billions of years, the moon's shape was really altered by the pull of Earth's gravity, creating small bulges in some areas. Now, these bulges support the moon's continuous inclination toward our planet. Additionally, when the Earth revolves, the moon's gravity pulls on the Earth as well, causing ocean tides to change. Humans saw the moon's far side for the first time in 1959 after the Soviet spacecraft Luna 3 took a number of historic photos during a trip. The images confirmed what many scientists had speculated. The far side of the moon appears quite differently from the side we typically see because it has been pelted by numerous asteroids throughout the centuries as a result of continually facing the cosmos. NASA astronaut Bill Anders provided mission control with the following description of the moon's far side during the 1968 Apollo 8 mission. The backside appears to be a sand pile that my kids have been playing in for a very long time. It is worn down, lacks definition, and is filled with numerous bumps and holes. The South Pole Aitken Basin's creation date is one of the mission's objectives for China. It's interesting to note that asteroids seem to have bombarded the southern portion of the moon at the same period as life first emerged on Earth. This could provide scientists with hints about what makes planets habitable. Understanding the bombardment's intensity and timing is crucial since it occurred at the same time that life began to exist on Earth. China's lander will research the basin in addition to carrying out a biology experiment to test if plant seeds and silkworm eggs would hatch under the moon's weak gravity. China probably has other goals outside science, such as gathering information for upcoming mining activities. Technically and figuratively, this is a significant accomplishment. China sees this landing as merely a first step toward colonizing the moon and using it as a large energy source, much as it sees its manned lunar landing in the future. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, Make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.